In today's chaotic world, the ability to remain calm and centered is not just a strength, it's a superpower. Imagine being able to navigate life with unshakable confidence, no matter what challenges come your way. You're about to uncover powerful stoic principles that will show you exactly how to master your emotions, handle rejection like a pro, and deal with toxic people without losing your peace of mind. These lessons, drawn from the wisdom of ancient Stoics like Marcus Aurelius, are more relevant today than ever. But before we dive deep into this transformative content, take a moment to hit that subscribe button. Why? Because if you're serious about building resilience, improving your relationships, and cultivating a mindset that keeps you in control, you don't want to miss the ongoing journey we're on here at Ancient Stoic Wisdom. The insights you're about to discover will not only help you today, but will empower you to approach every challenge with clarity and strength. Lesson 1. Learn to keep calm like a Stoic. You know that feeling when everything seems to be going wrong, yet there's that one person who remains cool as a cucumber? That's the essence of Stoicism, a philosophy that's not just ancient history, but a practical toolkit for modern life. Marcus Aurelius, a Roman emperor and a Stoic, faced wars, plagues and palace intrigue, yet he is remembered for his remarkable calmness and wisdom. His secret? He knew that life is unpredictable and often challenging, but how we respond to these challenges is what truly defines us. Now, imagine harnessing that same power in your everyday life. From navigating tough conversations to managing life's unexpected turns, in this video, we'll share 10 golden lessons offered by Stoicism that can help you stay calm and composed. These aren't just philosophical ideas, they're practical strategies tested by time and history, ready to be applied to your 21st century challenges. As we dive into these lessons, remember, this isn't about becoming emotionless. It's about becoming the master of your emotions, using the wisdom of Marcus Aurelius to turn every obstacle into an opportunity to grow stronger and more resilient. 1. Embrace what you can control. Living a calm life in today's fast-paced world can feel like a Herculean task. Yet Stoicism offers a timeless gem. Focus on what's within your power. This isn't about ignoring life's challenges, but about channeling your energy effectively. Imagine you're a modern-day warrior, not in battle, but in everyday life. Your weapons, your choices, actions, and attitude. Dive into your daily routine. It's filled with decisions and actions, some small, some big. Here's where your power lies. You can't control traffic, the weather, or someone else's mood, but you can control how you react. Stoicism isn't about suppressing emotions. It's about recognizing them and then deciding how to act. Feelings are like unwelcome guests at times, but you choose whether to let them take over the house. When anger or sadness knock, acknowledge them, understand why they're there, and then guide them to the exit. Your emotional house, your rules. Think of your mind as a garden. What you plant in it, how you tend to it, defines your inner landscape. In this garden, you are both the gardener and the architect. Plant seeds of positivity, water them with thoughtful actions, and weed out negativity. This doesn't mean turning a blind eye to life's harsh realities. It's about choosing the lenses through which you view these realities. When you focus on shaping your thoughts and actions, you create a haven of calm within, regardless of the storms outside. 2. Use the power of acceptance. Acceptance is like a quiet superpower. Imagine standing on a beach, waves crashing at your feet. You can't stop the waves, but you can learn to surf them. This is what Stoicism teaches us about acceptance. It's not about giving up or saying everything is fine when it's not. 
It's about recognizing that some things are out of our hands, and instead of fighting them, we learn to adapt and move with them. Now think about a day that starts off all wrong. You spill your coffee, miss the bus, or forget an important task. It's easy to let these moments ruin your mood, or even your whole day. But what if instead you accept these mishaps as just parts of life? You clean up the spill, catch the next bus, and tackle the forgotten task. This shift in mindset from frustration to acceptance can transform a bad day into a challenge you're ready to face. Let's bring Marcus Aurelius into our century. He might not be tweeting or posting, but his wisdom is timeless. He'd probably tell us that getting worked up over traffic, weather, or a rude comment online is like trying to stop the rain. It's pointless. Instead, we can choose how we react. When things don't go our way, it's our response that defines us, not the situation. We can be upset, or we can take a deep breath, accept it, and figure out the next step. This power of acceptance doesn't make you passive, it makes you powerful. When you accept what you can't change, you focus more on what you can. You become like a tree in a storm, bending, not breaking. You're more in control because you're not wasting energy on the uncontrollable. Each time you practice acceptance, you're building resilience, like a muscle, getting stronger with every challenge. And that's a lesson worth embracing. 3. Practice mindfulness. Mindfulness, often misunderstood as a complex concept, is actually Stoicism's secret weapon for modern life's hustle and bustle. Picture this. You're caught in the whirlwind of daily tasks, your mind racing from yesterday's regrets to tomorrow's worries. Here, Stoicism whispers, pause, breathe, and be here now. Mindfulness in Stoicism isn't about grand events, it's about finding magic in the mundane. Whether you're sipping coffee, walking to work, or just breathing, each moment is a chance to anchor yourself in the now. It's about being fully present in whatever you're doing, not lost in the past or future. Let's get practical. Start by tuning into your senses. What do you see, hear, smell? This isn't just about closing your eyes and meditating. It's about opening them wider to the world around you. When you eat, taste each bite. When you walk, feel each step. It's turning everyday actions into mindful moments. And when your mind wanders as it will, gently guide it back. This isn't about perfection. It's about persistence. Mindfulness is like a muscle. The more you train it, the stronger it becomes. Keeping mindfulness in mind does not imply an escape from reality, but instead, it implies being more present in it. It's facing life's challenges with a calm mind and a steady heart. When stress knocks on your door, mindfulness is that deep breath before you answer. It's recognizing that this moment right now is all we truly have. Embrace it, live it fully, this is the Stoic way, a path not to an easy life, but to a deeply meaningful one. Mindfulness, simple yet profound, is your tool for a more focused, calm, and resilient life. 4. Cultivate Resilience Facing life's hurdles, we often find ourselves at crossroads, questioning our ability to endure. You've been there, right? Feeling overwhelmed, yet there's a stirring within, a whisper of strength that refuses to be silenced. That's resilience, the Stoics' unspoken anthem ringing loud in the chaos of our modern world. It's about standing firm when life throws its curveballs, not because you're unbreakable, but because you know how to bend and not snap. Epictetus once subtly nudged us, not with grand words, but with a simple truth. It's not what happens to you, but how you react to it that matters. This isn't about dismissing your struggles, it's about harnessing them. Think of resilience as your mental muscle, getting stronger each time you face a challenge head-on. 
it's waking up each day, acknowledging that while the world might be unpredictable, your reaction to it doesn't have to be. You're the artist, life is your canvas, and resilience, it's your brush, painting over the rough patches with strokes of perseverance and grit. Now, cultivating resilience isn't a walk in the park. It's a journey, often uphill, filled with self-doubt and setbacks. But remember, every step, no matter how small, is a leap towards mastering your inner stoic. You start by embracing the discomfort, not shying away from it. It's in these moments when you're face to face with adversity that you find your true metal. So, next time life throws a curveball, catch it, examine it, learn from it. Your resilience isn't just about surviving the storm, it's about learning to dance in the rain with a spirit that refuses to be dampened. 5. Choose your response. You hold the power to shape your world with your response. Stoicism teaches us a vital lesson. Our reactions to life's hurdles define our journey. As modern-day warriors in a fast-paced world, embracing this wisdom is more crucial than ever. When you're faced with a setback, realize that the situation isn't the master of your emotions. You are. It's like being the director of your own movie. Every scene, every reaction is yours to script. So, when the unexpected strikes, take a moment, breathe. This pause isn't weakness. It's the strength of a sage, choosing a response that elevates you. Harnessing this stoic lesson isn't about suppressing emotions or being indifferent. It's about acknowledging feelings, anger, sadness, joy, and then steering them towards constructive action. You're not a leaf in the wind, tossed about by fate. You're the captain of your ship, navigating through the storms and calm waters alike. This approach transforms challenges into stepping stones, frustrated with work, channel that energy into creativity or learning a new skill. Heartbroken? Use that depth of emotion to connect more deeply with others or to understand yourself better. By choosing your response, you're not just surviving, you're thriving, crafting a narrative of resilience and growth. 6. Limit excessive desires. Ever found yourself chasing shadows, running after things that deep down you know won't really make you happy? That's the trap of excessive desires. Stoicism, a philosophy as old as the hills, yet as fresh as tomorrow's dawn, teaches us to steer clear of this pitfall. It's not about living a life devoid of joy, but finding joy in what's essential. This lesson is not about dimming your ambitions or settling for mediocrity. It's about refining your focus, aiming for what genuinely enriches your life. When your mind is cluttered with the noise of endless wants, it's like trying to find peace in a storm. Cut through that noise. It's not about the quantity of things in your life, but their quality. What brings you real joy? Is it the fleeting thrill of a new purchase? Or is it something more lasting, like the warmth of a good relationship, the satisfaction of personal achievement, or the serenity of a quiet moment to yourself? These are the treasures that don't fade with time. By limiting excessive desires, you're not losing out, you're gaining control over your happiness. Remember, the richest person is not the one who has the most, but the one who needs the least. So how do you put this into action? Start by decluttering, and I'm not just talking about your closet. Declutter your mind from the junk of needless desires. Focus on what adds value to your life, relationships, personal growth, experiences. These are the jewels that enrich our existence, and when those waves of desire for the next big thing come crashing in, take a breath, ask yourself, do I really need this? Will it make me a better person? Often the answer is no. That's your cue to step back and appreciate what you already have. Remember, the race for more can be endless. 
But your happiness doesn't have to be at the finish line. It's right here, in living a life aligned with your true values. As we continue, if these insights resonate with you and you're finding value in them, feel free to hit the like button. It's a great way to share this wisdom with others and expand our community of learning. 7. Be virtuous. You understand the struggle of juggling life's demands while striving to stay true to your values. But here's a powerful lesson from Stoicism. Be virtuous. It's a simple yet profound guide to maintaining calm in the chaos of modern life. This isn't about grand gestures. It's about small daily acts of integrity, courage, wisdom and self-control. These virtues, timeless in their wisdom, are the anchors in the stormy seas of our hectic world. First say to yourself what you would be, and then do what you have to do, spoke Epictetus, a Stoic philosopher. This quote isn't just a string of words, it's a call to action. It starts with self-reflection, understanding who you aspire to be. Then, it's about aligning your actions with this vision. If you seek calmness, act calmly in trying situations. If you value courage, stand up in the face of fear. Your actions define you, not your circumstances. By practicing these virtues daily, you build a fortress of calm around you, not just for the big challenges, but for the everyday hurdles as well. The Stoic path is practical and relevant, even in our buzzing digital age. It's about making deliberate choices. When the world rushes you, choose to pause and reflect. When anger or frustration knock at your door, welcome them with understanding, then let them go. It's in these moments of choice that you practice Stoic virtues. Remember, it's not about perfection, it's about progress. Each day, by living these virtues, you're not just navigating life, you're mastering the art of serene existence, one step at a time. This is the essence of Stoicism, a commitment to virtue as a pathway to inner peace. 8. Understand the transitory nature of life. You know the world doesn't stop spinning when we face challenges, and neither should we. Embracing the transitory nature of life is a vital stoic lesson that keeps us anchored in reality, especially when the tide gets rough. Life, in all its unpredictability, is constantly in motion. Here one moment, gone the next. This isn't a reason for despair, but a call to action. We're urged to live fully in the now to cherish the fleeting moments and to make the most out of every situation. It's about recognizing that change is the only constant and learning to dance in the rain rather than waiting for the storm to pass. Marcus Aurelius once mused, time is a river, a violent current of events glimpsed once and already carried past us and another follows and is gone. This vivid metaphor encapsulates the Stoic view on life's fleeting nature. It's a reminder that our time here is limited, and instead of dwelling on the past or fretting about the future, our focus should be on the present. What matters most is how we use the time we have. This doesn't mean we neglect planning for the future, but rather we do so with the awareness that things can change in an instant. It's about finding balance, preparing for tomorrow while living fully today. Now, reflect on how this understanding can transform your approach to everyday life. Instead of clinging to past glories or fretting over future uncertainties, focus on the present, the only time where you can act and make a difference. The past is a memory, the future a possibility, but the present is real and tangible. By accepting the transitory nature of life, you cultivate a peace that isn't shaken by life's inevitable shifts. This isn't about detachment or indifference, but about finding stability in the midst of life's inevitable storm. 
Embrace this lesson from Stoicism and you'll find a wellspring of calmness within, regardless of the chaos that might whirl around you. It's a powerful reminder that though the world may change, your ability to remain composed and resilient remains constant, a beacon of serenity in a sea of change. 9. The Value of Gratitude Today's whirlwind of life often leaves us lost in a sea of desires and disappointments, forgetting the sheer wonder of our existence. Yet there's a stoic beacon that cuts through this haze, one that Seneca, a sage of old, firmly believed in, the profound power of gratitude. This isn't about saying thank you for the big wins alone. It's about recognizing the small, everyday miracles that we tend to overlook. This lesson from Stoicism isn't just a philosophy, it's a practical tool, sharpening our focus on what truly matters. Gratitude, as Seneca taught, isn't a passive feeling, but an active engagement with the world. It's easy to feel grateful when life flows smoothly. The real challenge and the true test of gratitude lies in finding reasons to be thankful even when things don't go our way. It's about noticing the beauty in a rain-soaked day or appreciating the lesson in a failed endeavor. By shifting our perspective to appreciate the full spectrum of experiences, we cultivate a resilient and joyful heart. This stoic practice does more than just brighten our mood. It transforms challenges into opportunities for growth and wisdom. Seneca once said, True happiness is to enjoy the present without anxious dependence upon the future. This echoes the stoic call to embrace the now with gratitude. The trick is to start small. Notice the warmth of the sun on your skin, the smile of a stranger, or the comfort of your favorite song. By acknowledging these simple joys, we build a habit of gratitude that fortifies us against life's inevitable storms. In doing so, we don't just survive. We thrive, finding a wellspring of peace and contentment within ourselves that no external circumstance can take away. This is the Stoic way, a path not just to calm, but to a deeply fulfilling life. 10. Keep learning and growing. Challenges, my friend, are the unwelcome yet inevitable guests in our lives. They barge in unannounced and often unappreciated, yet they carry with them a gift, the opportunity for immense growth. Stoicism teaches us to embrace these moments, not with resignation, but with the vigor of a warrior. It's in these battles with life's uncertainties that we forge our true strength. Who then is invincible? The one who cannot be upset by anything outside their reason choice said Epictetus. This timeless insight is our compass on the journey of self-improvement. It nudges us to focus on our internal choices and responses rather than external events beyond our control. The true mark of growth is found not in the magnitude of challenges we face, but in the manner we choose to respond to them. It's about the small daily decisions that shape our character and destiny. In the seemingly mundane choices, we lay the foundation of a resilient and robust character, a testament to our commitment to personal evolution. Our journey is personal, unique, and cannot be compared to another's path. Each step, each stumble, is ours to own and learn from. We grow not just by reading or contemplating, but by living, by engaging with the world around us by testing our beliefs and values against the realities of life. This is the essence of modern Stoicism, a practical hands-on approach to wisdom. It's about rolling up your sleeves and diving into the messiness of life, knowing that in this chaos lies the opportunity to emerge stronger, wiser, more resilient. Embrace your journey with a heart full of courage and a mind open to the lessons that await. These ten lessons, steeped in Stoic philosophy, 
offer a practical guide to navigate life's distractions and uncertainties with calm and composure. Remember, true calm is cultivated from within. Lesson 2. A lack of friends is a sign that a person is very... When asked about his lack of friends, a stoic man likened friendship to a diamond, elusive and precious. He said, friendships are rare, valuable, and often surrounded by imitations. After a few errors in judgment, you begin to believe that all friendships are mere illusions, just fakes. Building on this sentiment, another individual observed, true friends are treasures to be held dear, yet it's seldom that we find a friend in life whom we can truly hold in such high regard. But what does it mean when you find yourself often alone navigating a world that seems to overflow with connections. Does a lack of friends indicate something deeper, something inherent in who you are? Today, we'll dive into this delicate topic, exploring the nuanced world of friendships, or the lack thereof. We'll look at the complexities of modern social dynamics and how they influence our relationships. Remember, not having a sea of friends doesn't reflect your worth. Sometimes it's about finding that one true gem. Stay with us as we dive into understanding why some struggle to find these connections, explore the root causes, and most importantly, unveil practical stoic steps to forge authentic, lasting friendships. Just like a sculptor chisels away at stone to reveal a masterpiece, you too can shape your social worlds, carving out meaningful relationships that stand the test of time. So, stay focused and let's embark on this journey together through the lens of Stoicism, with open minds and hearts ready to learn, grow and connect. 1. Shyness or Introversion We are wired to be social creatures, Yet for many, the maze of social interactions feels like a puzzle with missing pieces. Shyness or introversion is often seen as a hurdle in this journey, but let's flip the script. Imagine seeing these traits not as barriers, but as unique vantage points to view the world. In the heart of stoic wisdom lies the art of turning perceived weaknesses into strengths. The first step is embracing your nature, Remember Marcus Aurelius, who whispered through time, accept the things to which fate binds you. Your introversion isn't a flaw, it's a quiet power. It's about realizing that your journey is different, not less. When you accept yourself, you break free from the chains of what-ifs and should-bes. This self-acceptance is your armor in the bustling world of social interactions making you unshakable in your quiet confidence. Now, let's talk about the present moment. You're at a gathering, feeling the familiar tug of shyness. Here's where stoicism shines. It tells you, focus on what's in your control. Your control lies in your actions, your words, your kindness. Not in others' thoughts or the final outcome. When you speak, do it not to impress, but to express. This shift in focus from fear of judgment to the authenticity of your words lightens the load, making conversations less of a battleground and more of a playground for genuine connections. Additionally, understand that friendship isn't a trophy to win, but a garden to nurture. In seeking connections, detach yourself from the need for immediate results. Like Seneca, who saw life as a journey, view each interaction as a step on your path, not as a test of your worth. By concentrating on being your authentic self, you make space for relationships that resonate with your true self. Remember, in the Stoic view, every person you meet is a chance to learn, grow and reflect, not just another friend to add to your list. Through the lens of Stoicism, shyness and introversion transform from shadows into sources of strength. It's not about overcoming these traits, 
but about understanding and using them to navigate the complex world of human relationships. 2. Trust Issues When navigating the maze of friendships, trust issues often loom large. It's like walking on a tightrope, balancing your own values with the unpredictability of others. Trust is not given out like free samples at a store, it's earned piece by piece. Start by understanding yourself. What makes you tick? What scares you? Being clear about who you are is like having a compass in the wilderness of relationships. It's about knowing when to open the door to someone and when to keep it shut. Remember how a tree stands firm. It knows its roots. Just like that tree, know your roots, your values. This self-knowledge is your anchor in the ever-changing tides of human connections. Recognize that people, like seasons, change. Someone might seem trustworthy today and turn around tomorrow. This isn't a call to build walls around your heart, but rather to acknowledge that the only constant is change. Keep your emotional balance. If trust is broken, it's not the end of the world. It's an opportunity to learn and grow stronger. This doesn't mean you become cold and distant. Instead, it's about being realistic. Understanding that perfection is a myth, especially in human behavior. Be like water, adapting, flowing, yet always true to your nature. Open, honest communication is your best tool. If doubts creep in, talk about them. It's like turning on a light in a dark room. Suddenly, things become clearer. Don't shy away from these conversations. They're the bridges that can lead to deeper, more meaningful connections. A conversation can turn a misunderstanding into a moment of clarity. But remember, it's a two-way street. Listen as much as you speak. This balance of speaking and listening creates a rhythm a dance of words and understanding that strengthens the bonds of friendship. Ultimately, it's about building a circle of friends where trust is the foundation, not an afterthought. 3. Lack of social opportunities Navigating through the maze of modern life, one might stumble upon a quiet truth, which is that the lack of friends isn't always about not meeting people, but often about not engaging with the world around us. Our phones buzz with notifications, but our hearts yearn for real connections. Picture this. Volunteering in your community isn't just about helping others. It's a gateway to meeting souls who care about the same things you do. Whether you're planting trees or organizing books at a local library, Every shared task is a thread weaving you into the social fabric. These actions reflect a stoic virtue, contributing to the greater good, and in doing so, you find companions on the same path. But let's not forget the power of shared knowledge and passions. Imagine entering a room where everyone speaks the language of your profession or hobby. Workshops and seminars related to your interests aren't just for adding lines to your resume. They're fertile grounds for friendships. In these spaces, conversations flow effortlessly as you're surrounded by those who understand the nuances of your work or passion. It's like finding your tribe, where professional growth and personal connections go hand in hand. Remember also to embrace the great outdoors as your social canvas. Activities like hiking, biking or group yoga aren't just for physical health, they're catalysts for connection. In the embrace of nature, conversations bloom like wildflowers. These activities strip away the formalities of typical social settings, allowing genuine connections to grow. And while you're out there, Practice gratitude for the world around you and for those who share these moments with you. It's not about having a multitude of friends. It's about cherishing the connections that add color to your life. This approach, rooted in simplicity and sincerity, turns the pursuit of friendships into a fulfilling journey. 4. Lack of social skills. 
Friendships don't form themselves. They require effort and the right approach, something often overlooked in our busy lives. A lack of social skills can be a significant barrier to forming meaningful friendships. Remember how Marcus Aurelius subtly urged us to love those fate brings into our lives? It's a nudge towards embracing social opportunities, however small. Begin with manageable steps. Strike up a conversation in a coffee shop, join a local club, or engage in online communities with shared interests. These small interactions are the building blocks of confidence in social settings. Like a plant needing water and sunlight, social skills need nurturing and patience to flourish. One key element in developing social skills is listening with intent and empathy. In a world where everyone wants to be heard, being the one who listens sets you apart. Ask questions not just to respond, but to understand. Dive into the stories of others with genuine curiosity. This shift in focus from how you're perceived to truly understanding others builds deeper connections. It's not about impressing others with your wit or stories, but about creating a space where others feel valued and heard. Additionally, embrace the ups and downs of social interactions with a stoic calm. Not every attempt at conversation will lead to a lifelong friendship. And that's okay. Each interaction, whether it blossoms into a friendship or fizzles out, is a step forward in your social journey. The rejection isn't a reflection of your worth, but a natural part of human interaction. With each experience, you're not only building your social skills, but also learning to navigate the complex tapestry of human relationships with grace and resilience. Remember, your worth isn't tied to the number of friends you have, but the quality of the connections you nurture. 5. Changing Circumstances At times the lack of friends in our lives can echo the tale of the boy and the apple tree. The story mirrors how our priorities shift as we age, often drifting away from connections that once meant the world to us. As children, our friendships are like the playful times with the tree, pure and unburdened. But as we grow, like the boy, our focus shifts to what we perceive as essentials, money, status, a home. In this pursuit, we may unintentionally neglect the friendships that once sheltered us, like the apple tree providing shade. This shift in priorities isn't unusual. It's part of growing up, of evolving. But often in chasing what we think we need, we overlook what we already have. The boy returned to the tree only when he needed something, not realizing the constant, uncomplaining friendship it offered. Similarly, in our hustle for success and stability, we might overlook the friends who are our silent supporters. The result? Avoid filled with accomplishments perhaps, but lacking in true heartfelt connections. Rebuilding or nurturing friendships requires a conscious effort, much like tending to a garden. It's not about grand gestures, but consistent small acts of kindness and understanding. Start with reaching out, initiating conversations, and being there, not just in happy moments, but also in times of need. Remember friendships, like trees, grow deep roots over time, not overnight. The boy and the tree story teaches us that friendship is a two-way street, needing care and attention from both sides. Don't be the boy who remembered the tree only in times of need. Be the one who cherishes and nurtures these relationships regularly. 6. Shifting Priorities or Growth in our ever-changing lives, where we juggle careers, education and personal growth, the shifting of priorities often acts as a silent architect in the construction or decline of friendships. Stoicism, a philosophy as relevant today as in ancient times, teaches us to embrace life's dynamic nature. Imagine your life as a river, constantly flowing and changing course. 
as you navigate through the rapids of career advancement or the serene waters of family life. Your time for social interactions naturally ebbs and flows. This isn't a failure on your part. It's simply the reality of a life lived fully. Stoicism offers practical guidance for these times of transition. When your days are packed with meetings, deadlines or family responsibilities, it's tempting to try and maintain a wide circle of friends. Yet, Stoicism advises quality over quantity. It's better to have a few deep, meaningful connections than numerous superficial ones. This approach isn't about cutting people out, but rather about focusing your energy where it matters most. In doing so, you honor not only your time, but also the time of others, fostering relationships that are genuine and fulfilling. Adapting to life's changing priorities with Stoicism doesn't mean resigning yourself to a life with fewer friends. Instead, it's about understanding and accepting the natural flow of relationships. Some friends may drift away, while others will stay or even come into your life precisely because of your new priorities. Embrace this journey with wisdom and courage. Remember, each person you meet whether they stay for a season or a lifetime, adds unique value to your life's tapestry. Be present in your interactions and let Stoicism guide you to build friendships that are not only meaningful, but also resonate with the person you are becoming. 7. Mental Well-Being Our mental well-being, often sidelined in the hustle of life, is a silent cornerstone in the architecture of friendships. Stoicism, a philosophy not just of ancient marble but of modern-day resilience, sheds light on this. It's not about stiff upper lips, but about understanding our mental landscape. When our inner world is clouded by anxiety or shadowed by depression, it's like trying to navigate a social maze in the dark. The Stoics teach us to light a torch, not to dispel the darkness completely, but to see a path through it. Just as George Carlin pointed out, beneath the surface of a cynical outlook lies a disappointed idealist. This isn't about wearing rose-colored glasses, but recognizing that our mental battles can inadvertently build walls, not bridges, between us and potential friends. Now, let's get practical. Stoicism isn't about quoting Marcus Aurelius while sipping a latte, it's about actionable steps. First, mindfulness. And no, it's not a fancy word for daydreaming. It's about being present. In a world where our attention is the hottest commodity, being fully present in a conversation is like giving a rare gift. It shows you care, and that's friendship currency. Also, meditation isn't just for monks, it's for everyone juggling life's demands. The benefits of 10 minutes a day extend beyond your brain. It signals to others that you value clarity and calm. Consequently, tranquility as a goal might sound like a luxury in our 24-7 world, but it's the bedrock for stable friendships. Tranquility isn't escaping to a beach. Oftentimes than not, it's finding peace amid chaos. It's about having an anchor so that when life storms hit, and they will, you're not swept away. Friends aren't just for sunny days, they are shelters in storms. By striving for inner calm, you become someone others want to turn to. Stoicism teaches us that this inner tranquility is attainable through self-reflection and consistency. It's about recognizing our emotions, understanding them, and not letting them dictate our actions. This doesn't mean being emotionless. Rather, it's about being in control of how we react to our emotions. When you master this, you become a beacon of stability in an often unpredictable world. People are naturally drawn to those who exude a sense of calm and understanding. By cultivating your inner peace, you inadvertently create a welcoming space for friendships to flourish. Remember, 
In the pursuit of mental well-being, you're not just nurturing your mind, but also sowing the seeds for deeper, more meaningful connections. 8. Lifestyle Choices Life's rapid pace often leads to a solitary path where friendships fade into the background. Picture this, you're chasing deadlines, ticking off to-do lists, but at day's end, the chair across from you at the dinner table remains empty. It's not just about being busy, it's about what you prioritize. Stoicism nudges us to look hard at our choices. Are you filling your hours with what truly matters? Reflecting on this can be a game changer. It's about finding the courage to say no to time stealers that don't serve your deeper need for connection. Now consider this approach. Shape your day like a sculptor crafting a masterpiece. Each choice is a chisel stroke, carving out time for both responsibilities and relationships. It's not about stretching your day to fit more in, but rather about sculpting it wisely. You might have fewer hours for socializing, but the quality of these moments can soar. By selecting the right people, those who resonate with your values, every interaction becomes more meaningful. It's about depth, not just breadth in your social world. Remember the stoic art of balance, it's not just about dividing your time equally, but aligning it with what makes life genuinely fulfilling. Picture your life as a mosaic, with each piece representing an aspect of your existence. Work, hobbies, rest and friendships, each holds a place. Your task is to arrange these tiles to create a harmonious pattern. It's a balancing act, one that requires constant adjustment and thought. But when you get it right, the picture of your life becomes not only beautiful, but deeply satisfying. 9. Differences in Interests Diverse interests can be like different musical notes, each unique but part of a larger melody. When interests clash, it's not just a missed note, it's a potential symphony of connections left unplayed. Suppose you love rock music, but your colleague loves classical music. There's a gap, sure, but it's also a bridge waiting to be crossed. Stoicism nudges us to embrace these differences, not as roadblocks, but as stepping stones to broader horizons. It whispers, find the harmony in discord. When we focus solely on our interests, we risk crafting a bubble that limits our worldview and our circle of friends. By opening our arms to the diversity of passions around us, we're not just learning about new hobbies, we're unlocking doors to new relationships and perspectives. There's a saying, variety is the spice of life. Stoicism encourages this curiosity, reminding us that every person we meet holds a universe of experiences, ideas, and passions. Suppose you're a die-hard gamer and your neighbor is into gardening. Instead of nodding and walking away, ask about their favorite plant, show interest in their world. It's not about pretending to love gardening, it's about appreciating their passion, and in turn, allowing them to see and appreciate yours. This mutual curiosity is a powerful glue, bonding people with different interests. It's about understanding that beneath these hobbies and passions, we share common threads of excitement, dedication, and joy. Stoicism serves as a compass, guiding us to seek common ground in shared values and human emotions, rather than just common interests. Imagine a world where friendships are not just based on liking the same things, but on understanding and valuing each other's differences. It's a world where a sports enthusiast and a bookworm can find common ground in their perseverance and love for learning. In this dance of friendship, Stoicism teaches us to lead with an open heart and an open mind, creating connections that are not just about what we do, but who we are and what we can become together. Remember, the richness of our friendships is not measured by how similar we are, but by how we embrace and grow from our differences. 
Stoicism isn't about hiding your feelings. It's about understanding and directing them. Be open to seeking the friendships that resonate with your heart. If you've found value in our discussion, leave a thumbs up to help us reach more people in search of ancient wisdom. Lesson 3. How Kindness Will Ruin You Ever heard the saying, don't set yourself on fire to keep someone else warm? It's a powerful reminder connected to ancient Stoic wisdom about the importance of balancing kindness with self-care. Yet, in today's rush to be seen as good, to always be the one who gives, many have twisted the noble act of kindness into a self-destructive habit. We are often told to go above and beyond, to push our limits for the sake of others. But at what cost? The truth is, too much kindness, when it drains your own resources, energy and well-being, is not a virtue, but a path to ruin. Many have lost their way, giving so much of themselves that they're left feeling empty, unappreciated and burned out. It's a modern-day tragedy where the best of intentions lead to the worst of outcomes. Stoicism shows us another way. A way to be generous without losing oneself. A way to be kind but also kind to oneself. It teaches us the art of balanced generosity, ensuring our actions enrich others' lives while also safeguarding our own well-being. In this video, we'll unveil how Stoic principles can help you set healthy boundaries so your kindness becomes a source of strength, not depletion. We'll explore how to give without losing, love without hurting, and be there for others without disappearing from our own lives. Stay with us as we navigate the fine line between generosity and self-preservation, guided by the wisdom of Stoicism. 1. Don't set yourself on fire to warm others. Too much kindness can become a trap, one that Marcus Aurelius, a wise Stoic philosopher, would caution us against. Imagine yourself as someone who always rushes to help others, never saying no. It's like giving out pieces of yourself until there's nothing left. You become the person who's always there for others, but when you look around you find yourself standing alone in your time of need. It's not just about being kind, it's about being kind to yourself as well. Marcus would remind us that our first duty is to our own well-being. Without it, we can't genuinely be there for others. Consider the story of two neighboring gardeners, one who meticulously cared for their own garden, and another who, despite having their own plot, frequently tended to everyone else's gardens. The diligent gardener, understanding the importance of self-care, nurtured their garden with the right balance of attention and resources, resulting in a vibrant and flourishing space. This gardener's plot was not only a source of personal joy, but also provided surplus produce to share with neighbors. On the other hand, the disproportionately giving gardener spent so much time and effort on others' gardens that their own plot became neglected. Without proper care, their garden wilted, and the yields were meager. In their quest to be helpful, they overlooked their own needs, leaving their garden and metaphorically themselves depleted. Let this be a reminder to reflect before diving headfirst into helping others. Ask yourself, is this help sustainable? Am I preserving my well-being? The ancient Stoics would encourage us to practice Stoicism by setting healthy boundaries and ensuring that in our quest to be kind, we do not forget to be kind to ourselves. After all, you can't pour from an empty cup. In Stoicism, the aim is to maintain your inner peace and integrity while contributing positively to the lives of others, ensuring a balanced and fulfilling life for both you and those you wish to help. 2. Reciprocity has an expiration date. Generosity is a virtue that enriches our lives and those around us, yet it harbors a subtle trap when done without moderation. Stoicism, an ancient philosophy still echoing wisdom in our modern hustle, 
teaches us a critical lesson about the limits of kindness. Offering help with an open heart is noble, but expecting the same measure of generosity in return can lead us down a path of disappointment. Life has a way of showing us that the good we do today might not be remembered tomorrow. This isn't a reflection of our worth or the value of our deeds, but a natural drift of human memory and gratitude. Consider the act of giving as planting a tree. You nurture it, hoping it will grow, and perhaps one day offer shade or fruit. But nature has its course. Storms, droughts and seasons change. Similarly, when we extend kindness, we must detach from the expectation of a direct return. The Stoics, particularly Epictetus, advise us to focus on our actions, not their outcomes. Some things are within our control and some things are not, he stated, reminding us that the joy of giving should come from the act itself, not from the anticipation of repayment. Embracing this mindset shields us from the sting of unmet expectations. It teaches us emotional resilience, allowing us to continue being kind and generous without feeling depleted or taken advantage of. This doesn't mean we should harden our hearts, but rather that we should find balance. Recognize the impact of your kindness as a reflection of your character, not a transaction. By doing so, we not only protect our peace of mind, but also cultivate a form of generosity that is pure, self-sustaining, and genuinely fulfilling. This stoic principle encourages us to give freely but wisely, ensuring our kindness enriches us regardless of how the world responds. In your daily interactions, how can you apply the stoic principle of giving without expectation? Think about a specific scenario where you can offer kindness or support without seeking anything in return and consider the practical steps you might take to ensure your generosity remains a source of personal fulfillment rather than depletion. 3. Received requests have no limits. Reflecting on history, it's fascinating to observe the extreme services royalty demanded, from dressing to personal hygiene, all performed by attendants. Fast forward to today, and it's clear that people still have expectations of us, often asking for favors they could easily handle themselves. Stoicism shines a light on this, teaching us the value of setting boundaries and embracing moderation. This ancient philosophy serves as a beacon, guiding us through the sea of endless requests, enabling us to act with intention and preserve our emotional well-being. Stoicism isn't about denying help, but about finding balance, ensuring we don't lose ourselves while supporting others. Take, for instance, the poignant tale of a mother and her adult daughter in a quaint town. The mother, out of love, cared for her daughter to the point of preventing her from embracing her responsibilities. This dynamic continued until the mother's untimely demise, which surprisingly catalyzed the daughter's independence. This story underlines a crucial lesson. While our intentions may be pure, excessive support can inadvertently stifle growth. Marcus Aurelius, the Stoic Emperor, encapsulated this wisdom in his meditation. A man's job is to stand upright not to be kept upright by others. This insight urges us to encourage self-reliance, fostering a balance that benefits everyone involved. Seneca, with his profound insights into human connections, observed, he who begins to be your friend because of the benefit will also cease because of the benefit. This serves as a powerful reminder to nurture relationships based on genuine connections rather than transactional interactions. True friendship and support should not hinge on what we can offer, but on mutual respect and understanding. Stoicism teaches us to value ourselves not for what we can give, but for who we are, cultivating self-esteem and authentic connections. Stoicism empowers us to embrace moderation, 
setting boundaries to protect our well-being while still extending genuine support to others. By prioritizing our responsibilities and honoring our needs, we not only preserve our authenticity, but also engage in more meaningful acts of generosity. This balanced approach to life and relationships ensures that we remain true to ourselves and our values, leading a life of virtue and fulfillment. As we navigate the demands of modern life, let us remember that being mindful of our own needs is not selfishness, but a necessary act of self-care. 4. Being seen and treated as fragile. Stoicism teaches us a powerful lesson about inner resilience and self-command. It's about building a fortress within, honing the art of self-restraint, and drawing clear lines in the sand that define our personal space. Over time, constantly bending over backward for others can ironically lead to being perceived as weak. Without firm boundaries, we become exposed, easily exploited, by those who see our generosity not as a strength, but as an opening to take advantage of. This cycle of overextension and exploitation drains us, leaving us feeling undervalued and overburdened. Yet, the moment we start to assertively say no, a shift occurs. We're no longer the go-to for every request or demand. This assertiveness broadcasts a newfound respect for ourselves, signaling to others that we value our time and energy, warranting their respect in return. Cicero, a luminary in the Stoic philosophy, encapsulated this when he asserted, what you think of yourself is much more important than what others think of you. By setting boundaries and exercising self-discipline, we not only protect our mental and emotional well-being, but also command respect from those around us. Remember, the power of no is transformative. It's a declaration of self-worth and a testament to the respect you demand from the world. Embrace this mantra and watch as it reshapes the dynamics of your relationships, fostering a mutual respect grounded in dignity and self-value. However, embodying this change isn't without its challenges. Being universally available often attracts those seeking aid, sidelining you when the time for celebration comes. It's a harsh reality where your open-heartedness might lead to exclusion from moments of joy, confined to the role of the helper, absent in times of leisure. This realization, though bitter, serves as a litmus test for discerning genuine connections from opportunistic ones. It's a stoic exercise in recognizing the true value of relationships, encouraging a mindful approach to whom we offer our time and energy. Did you know that the practice of setting boundaries, a core stoic principle, not only improves our personal well-being, but also enhances the quality of our relationships? It's a curious but true aspect of human psychology. When we respect ourselves enough to say no, we often gain the respect of others. This paradoxical effect highlights the transformative power of self-respect and the importance of discernment in our connections. By embracing Stoic wisdom, we not only protect ourselves from burnout, but also cultivate relationships that are truly enriching and reciprocal. If you have learnt anything of value so far, leave a thumbs up to show your support. Now let's discuss strategies to avoid being used by others and to avoid the dangers of too much kindness. First strategy, eliminate the fear of saying no. Reflect deeply on why the word no often feels so heavy, tracing its weight back to early lessons that equated niceness with acceptance. Such lessons, deeply ingrained during our formative years, come laced with a fear of rejection, shaping a belief system that equates our worth with perpetual accommodation. Yet the philosophy of Stoicism invites us to challenge and dissect these ingrained notions, advocating for a life of deliberate choice 
rather than one led by the undercurrents of past conditioning. As adults, we wield the autonomy to redefine our interactions, recognizing that the fears instilled in us as children no longer hold sway. Through the lens of Stoicism, we're equipped with the mental tools to analyze our emotions, allowing us to respond to life's demands with thoughtfulness rather than being puppeteered by past habits. Asserting boundaries by saying no, especially when requests encroach upon our well-being or sense of fairness, becomes not just an act of defiance against outdated fears, but a profound exercise in self-respect and autonomy. However, it's crucial to balance our newfound assertiveness with empathy and emotional intelligence. Stoicism doesn't merely advocate for self-interest or isolation, but stresses the importance of contributing positively to our community and the lives of those around us. The philosophy encourages us to find a middle ground where we can offer help and support to others without compromising our well-being. This is where emotional intelligence comes into play, allowing us to discern when and how to help in a manner that is both beneficial to others and sustainable for us. Recognizing the genuine needs of others while also being mindful of our own limits is a testament to true Stoic wisdom. It ensures that our acts of kindness are not only acts of self-discipline, but also of compassion and understanding, fostering a society where mutual respect and support thrive. Second strategy, pay attention to your feelings. Embracing Stoicism nudges us toward introspection and mindfulness, guiding us to scrutinize our thoughts and emotions, fostering mental resilience. This ancient wisdom encourages us to become custodians of our inner peace by observing our reactions and feelings, especially in acts of generosity. It teaches us that true fulfillment in assisting others should elevate us akin to the buoyancy of clouds. Conversely, feelings of exhaustion, irritation, or exploitation signal a need to recalibrate. It's essential to recognize when our contributions, though not obligatory, begin to erode our serenity. Acknowledging this discomfort is not self-deception, but a courageous act of self-care ensuring that our benevolence remains a source of joy rather than a drain on our spirit. Third strategy, see yourself as a priority. It's easy to become a maestro in the most obscure fields, yet completely overlook our own well-being. Echoing the stoic virtues of discipline and self-esteem, carving out moments for self-care is non-negotiable. Stoicism, after all, nurtures the soul, teaching us the art of self-preservation. So, sidestep self-neglect. Nurture your physical, emotional and mental health. Acknowledge your presence. Elevate your needs. This approach demands your full commitment. Embrace your entirety. Forgive your past missteps. And view the unfolding year as a canvas for stoic renewal. Select an endeavor solely for your pleasure, honoring this time as a testament to self-love. Uphold your boundaries without guilt in declining others. If demands encroach on your sanctuary, offer assistance within your constraints, underscoring that your personal revival takes precedence. Fourth strategy, identify the takers. Embracing stoic virtues like self-discipline and discernment empowers us to distinguish relationships that enrich us from those that deplete our spirit. Engaging with individuals who perpetually demand more, be it in terms of attention, time or resources, mirrors a dynamic where we, the nurturers, are left exhausted, our energies sapped by the insatiable. Stoicism teaches us the value of inner fortitude, reminding us that change is a door only one can unlock for oneself. Believing we can transform others through sheer goodwill is a fallacy. True transformation is a personal journey, ignited by individual willpower, 
not external interventions. This philosophy doesn't advocate for cold-heartedness, but champions a balanced approach to relationships. It's a dance of give and take, where excessive generosity can leave us barren, while stinginess isolates us. Stoicism encourages us to harness our capacity for kindness and generosity, yet also to wield the sword of discernment, cutting ties when necessary for our well-being. It's about finding equilibrium, ensuring our acts of kindness are not at the expense of our own vitality. Remember, the strongest relationships are those where both parties grow, not where one wilts so the other can bloom. Stoicism invites us to strike a balance, compelling us to carefully evaluate our actions and their impacts. It emphasizes the importance of maintaining equilibrium in our generosity, urging us not to exhaust our resources to the detriment of our primary objective, living a fulfilling life. Conversely, it warns against being overly cautious in our giving, suggesting instead that we use our generosity wisely. Seneca, a luminary of Stoic thought, captures this ethos perfectly. Kindness is a treasure. A benefit should be kept like a buried treasure to be unearthed only in case of necessity. His words encourage us to be prepared to act benevolently towards others, acknowledging the deep bond that connects all humans. What resonated with you most in today's discussion? Let us know in the comments. If this message was valuable to you, and you're curious to learn more about how Stoicism can enhance your life, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe to our channel. Lesson 4. Using Reverse Psychology to Turn Rejection into Your Advantage have you ever faced a door slammed shut in your face only to find it was the best thing that could have happened to you? Well, today we're diving deep into the art of turning the tables on rejection, inspired by none other than the Stoic philosopher, Marcus Aurelius. Imagine you're in a world where every no doesn't push you down, but propels you forward. Rejection. A word that often brings a sting can become your stepping stone to greatness. It's not about tricking fate, but understanding that sometimes the universe's no is a hidden yes to something greater. So, are you feeling overlooked, ignored or undervalued? It's time to flip the script. In this video, we'll unpack 13 powerful lessons that teach you to harness the power of rejection we're not just talking theory. These are practical, real-world strategies that you can apply in your daily life. Before we jump in, let's make sure this wisdom reaches as many as possible. Hit that like button and ring the notification bell. It tells YouTube you're finding value in what we're sharing. Now, let's get started on this transformative journey together, ready to turn your rejections into your greatest victories? Number 1. Ignore them too. When life hands you the cold shoulder of indifference, don't shrink back, rise above it. Ignoring those who ignore you isn't petty. It's a powerful statement of your self-worth. Imagine this. Someone decides you're not worth their time. That's their loss, not yours. By choosing not to engage, you're saying, I am worth more. It's like turning a mirror towards them, silently reflecting their behavior and showing them you're unaffected. Now, how do you do this without losing yourself in bitterness? Simple. Focus on your life, your goals, your happiness. Dive into activities that enrich you, be it reading, sports, learning a new skill, or just enjoying the company of those who do value you. This isn't about getting back at someone, it's about reclaiming your energy and investing it where it matters. Sometimes it stings when someone ignores us, but instead of dwelling in that pain, use it as a catalyst for growth. Build a fortress of self-respect and let their indifference bounce off it. You're not just surviving their rejection, you're thriving despite it. 
This approach doesn't just show emotional maturity, it's a testament to your inner strength. Remember, your value doesn't decrease based on someone's inability to see your worth. Stay true to yourself and let your actions speak louder than their silence. 2. Don't react emotionally. Rejection can sting, making you want to react to let your emotions run wild. But here's a secret weapon from the Stoic playbook, calmness. When someone brushes you off, it's tempting to let frustration or sadness take the driver's seat. Stoicism, a philosophy as relevant today as it was in ancient Greece, offers a different path. It suggests embracing a composed, thoughtful response. This isn't about suppressing your feelings, it's about not letting them control you. When you're ignored, instead of getting upset or seeking validation, take a step back. Ask yourself, why is this bothering me? Often it's not the rejection itself, but our own insecurities that hurt us the most. Here is where we need to get practical. You're being ignored. Breathe. Reflect on why this moment isn't defining you. It's just that, a moment. Stoicism teaches us to focus on our actions and responses, not on others' behavior. So stay polite, stay kind. If you feel like reaching out, do so with genuine concern, not expectation. This approach isn't about being passive, it's about being master of your emotions. It's recognizing that your self-worth isn't tied to others' approval. Your power lies in how you respond, not in how others treat you. That's a game changer. Adopting this mindset isn't easy, but it's transformative. When you master calmness in the face of rejection, you're not just handling a tough situation, you're growing. You're learning that your inner peace doesn't depend on external validation. It's a journey towards self-confidence, where you learn to value yourself independently. By doing this, you show real strength and resilience. And guess what? That's incredibly attractive. People are drawn to those who are self-assured, those who don't crumble at the first sign of indifference. So by staying calm, you're not just coping, you're thriving. You're becoming someone who can face rejection and turn it into a stepping stone for personal growth. That's the Stoic way. 3. Remove them from your mind. When faced with rejection, harnessing the art of detachment becomes a powerful tool in your arsenal. This isn't about forgetting or pretending the rejection didn't sting. It's about channeling that experience into something transformative. Start by acknowledging the rejection. Feel its impact, but don't let it anchor your thoughts. Like a skilled sailor navigating rough seas, use the waves to steer you forward, not to capsize your boat. Transforming rejection requires a shift in perspective. Picture rejection not as a roadblock, but as a detour sign, guiding you towards new paths and possibilities. Explore activities that enrich your spirit and broaden your horizons. Dive into a book that challenges your thinking, take up a sport that tests your limits, or volunteer in a community project that offers a fresh perspective. These aren't just distractions, they are stepping stones to self-discovery and growth. Every new experience carves out a part of you, making you more resilient, more adaptable. Also, cultivate a circle of positivity. Surround yourself with people who uplift and inspire you, in their company, share your aspirations and listen to theirs. Such interactions create an environment where mutual growth thrives. Remember, rejection is not a reflection of your worth. It's an invitation to rediscover and reinvent yourself. As you navigate this journey, you'll find that what once seemed like a painful rejection was, in fact, a nudge towards a more fulfilling path. 4. Demonstrate your value. Rejection stings, but it's also a litmus test for your resilience. 
instead of wilting under its weight, view it as a chance to reveal your grit. Next time you're sidestepped in a meeting or overlooked for a promotion, take a breath. Instead of brewing a storm of self-pity or bitterness, channel that energy into constructive action. Work on a project that highlights your skills or offer to lead a new initiative. Your value isn't diminished by others' oversight. It's an opportunity to shine brighter, undeterred by the shadows of dismissal. Remember that old saying, when one door closes, another opens. That's not just idle chatter. It's a blueprint for action. Rejection isn't a reflection of your worth. It's a redirection to where you're needed more. If you're passed over for a role, maybe it's the universe nudging you towards something that aligns better with your talents and passions. Use this as a catalyst to reassess and realign. What are your core strengths? How can you pivot to make the most of them? It's about creating your success story, one where every setback is a setup for a comeback. This isn't about plastering a smile over disappointment. It's about embracing the full spectrum of emotions and then moving forward with grace. Stoicism teaches us to focus on what we can control, our actions and reactions. When faced with rejection, practice empathy, both for yourself and others. Maybe that colleague who overlooked you is battling their own insecurities. Extend understanding, not as a weakness, but as a testament to your strength. Grow from these experiences, reflect on them, learn, and then, like a phoenix, rise from the ashes of rejection, more formidable and wise than before. Rejection, therefore, isn't the end of your story. It's a twist in the plot, pushing you towards becoming the most authentic, resilient version of yourself. Face it head on, with the wisdom of the ages and the vitality of youth, and watch as it transforms from your biggest fear to your greatest ally in personal growth and success. 5. Cut off contact. Silence isn't just the absence of sound. It's a powerful tool in your emotional toolkit, especially when dealing with rejection. Imagine you've been ignored or turned down. Your instinct might scream to fix it, to reach out, to bridge that gap. But here's where you flip the script. Embrace silence. It's not about playing games. It's about regaining your power. When you choose not to react, not to bombard with messages or calls, you're taking a step back. This pause isn't just for them. It's for you to recalibrate. To remember your worth isn't tied to someone's approval. Let's dig deeper. This silence isn't passive, it's active and strategic. You're not just waiting, you're reflecting and growing. It's a time to refocus on your goals, your passions, your life. Think of it as a reset button, giving you clarity and strength. This period of no contact isn't cold or unkind. It's a boundary you set for your mental peace. It's saying, I respect myself too much to chase or beg. This mindset isn't just stoic, it's empowering. It speaks volumes about your self-worth and confidence. Ultimately, consider the silent message you're sending. In a world where instant responses are expected, your silence can be intriguing, even attractive. It shows you're not easily shaken, that you have a life full of interests and priorities beyond this rejection. It's not about making them regret or come back crawling. It's about showing you're solid, centered, and not easily swayed by external validation. This approach doesn't guarantee a change in their behavior, but it ensures a change in yours, making you stronger, more centered, and ready to face whatever comes next with grace and poise. 6. Prove them wrong. The art of using rejection isn't simply about proving others wrong, but proving to yourself what you're truly capable of. It's about transforming no into your fuel for growth. Let's say someone doubts your abilities in a specific skill or task. 
Here's your chance to sharpen that skill, not for their approval, but to surpass your own limits. Dive deep into learning, practice relentlessly, and show up with a level of proficiency that even you didn't know you had. This isn't about a grand reveal to the doubters, it's about quietly building a fortress of competence and self-assurance. Now, imagine the impact of your actions rather than words. You don't need to announce your plans or progress. Let your results speak. If you're deemed as uncreative, embark on a project that showcases your creativity. If labeled as uncommitted, let your consistent actions be your response. This silent revolution of self-improvement isn't a battle against others' perceptions, but a crusade for personal excellence. And when you change, the world's narrative about you shifts too. The true essence of proving them wrong lies not in changing their opinions, but in transforming your own self-image. Your journey of self-improvement will not only surprise others, but also redefine your understanding of your capabilities. This isn't just about proving them wrong. It's about redefining what right means to you. And in this journey, the greatest victory is the realization that the only validation that truly matters is the one you give yourself. 7. Go out and have fun. Life's true essence shines brightest when we step outside our comfort zones. Embracing joy isn't just about having fun, it's a strategic move to build resilience. When faced with rejection, the typical reaction is to withdraw, to stew in the sourness of the experience. But here's a twist. Counter that instinct by deliberately seeking out joy. This isn't about ignoring your feelings, it's about giving them a new playground. Whether it's exploring a new hobby or revisiting an old passion, the act itself becomes a statement of defiance against the weight of rejection. Humans are social creatures and there's immense power in shared experiences. In your journey to leverage rejection, remember the value of your tribe. Invite friends for a hike, join a community art project, or simply share a meal. These moments of connection do more than just uplift your spirits. They reaffirm your place in the tapestry of human interaction. Each laugh shared, each story exchanged, is a subtle reminder that you are more than the sum of your setbacks. You're part of a larger narrative, one that thrives on connection and shared resilience. Here's where the real magic happens. Step into the unknown, Rejection can feel like a closed door, but in reality, it opens many more. Try a cuisine you've never tasted, visit a neighborhood you've never explored, or attend a workshop on a topic foreign to you. These experiences are not just distractions, they're opportunities for growth. Each new experience adds layers to your character, making you more adaptable, more empathetic, and more equipped to handle life's curveballs. Remember, the goal isn't to forget the rejection, but to grow from it, turning every no into a stepping stone towards a richer, more vibrant life. 8. Build your social status. Imagine you're in a room, ignored, almost invisible. Here lies your hidden opportunity. Stoicism teaches us to turn such moments of rejection into catalysts for personal growth. Instead of seeking validation, focus on self-enhancement and community involvement. This isn't about climbing a social ladder. It's about climbing your own ladder of self-development. Activities like physical fitness, exploring hobbies, or advancing in your career aren't just tasks. They are your tools to carve out a stronger, more resilient self. Think about sharing your journey, not for applause, but for connection. When you talk about your interests or achievements, let it be a bridge to find others who resonate with your story. This isn't a strategy to gather followers, but a sincere attempt to find like-minded souls. By engaging in volunteering or networking, you're not just adding lines to your resume, 
you're weaving a tapestry of meaningful relationships. This approach is deeply rooted in Stoic philosophy, where personal growth and contributing to the greater good are intertwined. In building your social status, the intention is paramount. It's not a quest for popularity. It's a journey towards becoming a better version of yourself. Every step you take should be a step towards improvement with a ripple effect that enhances the community. This perspective shift is crucial. It's not about being seen. It's about seeing yourself grow and in turn helping others grow. This stoic mindset is a powerful tool in navigating the modern world, turning the tide of rejection into a powerful wave of positive transformation. 9. Act as if they don't exist. When faced with someone who ignores you, sometimes the strongest response is a quiet one. It's not about being petty or cold. It's about respecting your own peace. If someone chooses to overlook you, let them. Don't waste your energy trying to catch their eye or spark a conversation. Instead, redirect your attention. In a social setting like a party, this might mean turning towards someone who values your company. Start a conversation there. It's about recognizing that your worth isn't defined by someone else's acknowledgement. In the unavoidable intersections where you must interact with this person, maintain professionalism, keep conversations brief to the point and devoid of personal depth. This isn't about showing them up, it's about showing up for yourself. By keeping it strictly business, you're not giving room for unnecessary drama. It's a stance that says, I'm here for what's important, not for the play. This approach helps you stay focused on what matters, keeping you grounded and unshaken by indifference. Ultimately, if the disregard continues, embrace the power of walking away. This isn't defeat. It's a strategic retreat. It's about understanding that your energy is better invested elsewhere in relationships and pursuits that bring you joy and growth. By choosing not to engage in a one-sided struggle, you're not just moving past a person. You're moving towards better opportunities, healthier interactions, and a more peaceful state of mind. Your response to indifference isn't a reflection of defeat. It's a testament to your strength and self-respect. 10. Give them the silent treatment. Choosing silence in the face of indifference isn't about getting the upper hand. It's about maintaining your dignity. Stoicism teaches us to use silence not as a means to provoke or manipulate, but as a tool for self-reflection and emotional mastery. When someone ignores you and you respond with silence, let that silence be a period of introspection. It's a time to understand your feelings, to sift through your thoughts and to find clarity. This isn't about punishing the other person, it's about preserving your inner peace. In this silence, there's a profound opportunity for personal growth. It's not about shutting down, it's about opening up to yourself. Stoicism encourages us to use these moments to reflect on our virtues, our values, and how we want to engage with the world. It's a chance to ask ourselves, why does this bother me? What can I learn from this? How can I grow? This kind of silence is constructive, not destructive. It's a moment to reinforce your character and align your responses with your principles. So, if you choose to remain silent, let it be a conscious choice rooted in self-care and wisdom. It's a decision to avoid engaging in behaviors that are beneath you, like manipulation, revenge, or pettiness. Instead, it's embracing Stoicism's call for temperance and self-control. By choosing not to respond, you're not just ignoring someone else. You're attentively listening to yourself. It's a practice in maintaining your composure, focusing on your personal journey and embodying the stoic ideal of serenity in the face of adversity. 11. Don't beg for attention. 
In the face of indifference, the Stoic way isn't to beg for attention. It's a call to anchor yourself in your own self-worth and independence. When someone ignores you, it's not a cue for you to perform louder for their gaze. Instead, it's an opportunity to turn inward and reaffirm your own value. Stoicism teaches us that our self-esteem shouldn't be a pendulum swayed by others' attentions. It's about being firm in your own self-regard, knowing that your worth isn't up for negotiation. Engage in your passions and pursuits with a heart full of self-sufficiency. It's not about showing off to make someone realize what they're missing. It's about realizing for yourself what you bring to the table. Indulge in activities that fulfill you, connect with people who appreciate you, and cultivate a life that makes you proud. This isn't a passive act, it's a vibrant, active embrace of your own life. It's about being so involved in your own growth and happiness that the need for outside validation starts to fade away into irrelevance. So rather than chasing after fleeting attention, invest in yourself. Build a life that you're content with, independent of how others perceive it. Let your confidence and self-assurance be a byproduct of your personal development and achievements, not a show put on for an audience. This stoic approach isn't just about dealing with rejection, it's about transcending it. By focusing on what truly matters, your own journey of growth and fulfillment, you turn rejection into an opportunity to strengthen your resolve and deepen your understanding of self-worth. 12. Be kind, but emotionally distant. Even when faced with indifference, choose to respond with kindness, but keep your emotional world fortified. This isn't about being cold, it's about protecting your inner peace. When someone ignores you, it's natural to feel hurt or frustrated. However, Stoicism teaches us to greet such moments, not with emotional turbulence, but with a composed heart. Offer a smile, a polite greeting, or a simple wish for a good day, but do so without the weight of expectations. Your kindness is a gift, not a transaction. Maintaining emotional distance is not about building walls. It's about drawing lines. It's understanding that while you can control your actions, you cannot control how others respond. This distance is not a sign of weakness, but a mark of strength and self-respect. It's a conscious choice to not let someone else's actions dictate your emotional state. By staying kind yet detached, you're saying, I choose not to let your indifference upset my balance. This approach doesn't just protect you, it empowers you. And this path of kindness combined with emotional detachment is a powerful embodiment of stoic wisdom. It's a balance that allows you to interact with grace, yet stand firm in your own emotional integrity. It's a demonstration of respect for yourself and for others, and a testament to your maturity and understanding. This way, you navigate through life's rejections, not with bitterness or hurt, but with an unshakable sense of inner tranquility and dignity. 13. Don't reveal your struggle. When someone ignores you, the temptation to show your struggles can be overwhelming. However, Stoicism teaches us the art of maintaining our composure. It's not about pretending everything is fine. It's about internal resilience. Displaying that you're unaffected isn't a charade. It's a reflection of true inner stability. Continue with your life with the same vigor and determination as before. It's not a performance for others, but a testament to your own strength. This approach isn't about denying your feelings. Acknowledge them, but don't let them be the captain of your ship. Let calmness and self-assurance be your guides. It's about controlling what you can, your actions, your responses, your demeanor. By continuing your life with confidence, you're not just showing others your strength. You're reminding yourself of it. It's a subtle but powerful way of asserting that your sense of self-worth is independent of others' opinions or actions. 
In essence, by not revealing your struggle, you're embracing the stoic philosophy of emotional resilience. This isn't about hiding your emotions. It's about managing them in a way that maintains your dignity and self-respect. It's a demonstration of wisdom and integrity, showing that you are grounded in your own character and not swayed by external circumstances. Your response in the face of rejection is not just for the world to see. It's a mirror reflecting your own fortitude and stability. We've journeyed together through the twists and turns of reverse psychology, uncovering 13 powerful lessons on transforming rejection into a tool for your success. Remember, each no you face is a stepping stone to resilience, a lesson in stoicism, teaching us to channel our inner strength. Now, I challenge you to apply these insights in your daily life. Embrace rejection, not as a setback, but as a catalyst for growth and self-discovery. I'm eager to hear your stories of triumph, so hit that subscribe button, ring the notification bell, and drop a comment below. Lesson 5. Smart Ways to Deal with Toxic People It's early in the morning, you're sipping your favorite coffee, scrolling through messages, and suddenly you're hit with words that feel like a splash of cold water, someone's harsh comment or an unkind gesture. Just like that, your day seems a bit less bright. Facing toxic people is a challenge we all encounter, but how we respond can entirely shift the dynamics. Have you ever noticed how sometimes a single negative comment can cling to your thoughts longer than a compliment? It's like a stain on your favorite shirt that refuses to wash out. Now here's where your power lies the ability to see that stain and decide not to let it ruin your shirt or your day. It's about understanding that these harsh moments reflect less about you and more about the other person's internal battles and insecurities. In his meditations, Marcus Aurelius offered timeless wisdom. When another person blames you or hates you, or people voice similar criticisms, go to their souls, penetrate inside, and see what sort of people they are. You will realize that there is no need to be racked with anxiety that they should hold any particular opinion about you. This perspective invites us to look beyond surface interactions and understand the deeper motivations behind others' actions. This moment of confrontation with negativity also presents a unique opportunity for self-reflection. So. I challenge you to dive inward, stripping away the layers of expectations and societal masks. What truths about yourself have been shadowed by others' judgments? Are you allowing someone else's negativity to define your day or your worth? Let's embark on this journey of self-discovery together, finding strategies not only to deal with toxic individuals, but also to strengthen our sense of self-awareness. You've likely met someone like this in your life. Number one, self-awareness. The compass that guides us through life's murky waters. We all encounter those individuals who seem to press all the wrong buttons, don't we? We often label them as toxic, for they spread negativity like a dense cloud of smoke, obscuring our vision and making it hard to see clearly. But what if I told you there's a way to clear the air and navigate through this smoke without losing your way? It all begins with self-awareness. Just as knowing you're allergic to smoke prompts you to avoid it, understanding your responses to toxic people empowers you to keep your emotional distance. Allow me to share a lesson from an old fencing master. He taught his students that the true skill in fencing wasn't merely in attacking, but in knowing precisely when to dodge. Imagine yourself executing a perfect sidestep each time a toxic person lashes out. You don't absorb the blow because you're acutely aware of your own boundaries, and you respect them enough not to let anyone cross. This doesn't require anger or a counterattack. It's about possessing a quiet, unshakable knowledge of who you are. Transforming this understanding into a daily habit isn't as daunting as it may seem. Think of it like tying your shoes. 
Initially, you focus on it, but eventually it becomes second nature. When faced with negativity, take a step back and ask yourself, why does this bother me? What can I learn from this? These questions aren't about making excuses for others. They're about reinforcing your own mental fortitude. But let's be real. This path won't always be obstacle-free. Navigating through the smoke of others' negativity isn't a fairy tale. There will be days when it feels easier to react, to throw back what was hurled at you. Yet, that victory would be fleeting, hollow, because it betrays who you truly are. Remember, you choose to respond, not out of convenience, but because it's right for you. It's about constructing a fortress within yourself, not from arrogance, but from a place of strength and calm. Acknowledge the negativity without letting it define your actions. Embrace the challenge. It sharpens you, makes you more resilient, and in the long run, undeniably stronger. And as you turn your gaze toward the sky, notice how forgiveness and memory intermingle. Number two, forgiveness and memory. Imagine stars shining brightly despite the encircling darkness. Now, think of these stars as people who add value to your life, illuminating your path with understanding and empathy. But on the other hand, you may encounter black holes, representations of toxic individuals who pull you into their darkness, stripping you of joy and energy. Now, here's the cosmic question. Is there a way to navigate this dance of relationships without getting sucked into these black holes? Picture yourself as a spaceship, not fueled by hydrogen, but by courage and wisdom. This courage is your forgiveness, the power cell that absolves people of their faults and allows you to soar higher than any toxic influence. It disentangles you from the gravity of resentment that chains you to painful memories and grudges. But every spaceship needs a navigational system, and that's where your memory comes in. It's the keeper of life's lessons, the silent whisper in your ear, reminding you to take a detour when a known black hole looms in your flight path. Our past encounters with toxicity aren't shackles, they're points on a star map guiding us toward safer orbits. Each lesson learned from dealing with a toxic individual Every overpowering emotion felt becomes a beacon reminding us what to avoid and shaping our interactions. This combination of forgiveness and memory serves as the compass guiding us through the complex constellation of relationships. So, as you journey through this celestial dance, ask yourself, through whom do you see the brilliance of a star, and from whom do you need to divert like a black hole? Use your forgiveness as fuel, propelling you forward, and let your memory help you navigate to avoid repeating the same patterns in the intricate ballet of life. Let us aspire to be the spaceship that forges its path through cosmic chaos with refined grace, driven by the power of forgiveness and guided by the wisdom of memory. 3. Emotional Stability Navigating life surrounded by toxic individuals can feel like trekking through a dense fog. You lose sight of where you're headed, and every step feels uncertain. But what if I told you there's a way to clear the fog? It starts from within, through the strength of emotional stability cultivated by Stoicism. Think about that one person who, no matter the chaos, never seems ruffled like a mountain standing firm against a raging storm. This isn't about being indifferent or cold. It's about recognizing that the only thing truly under our control is how we respond to the outside world. Stoicism teaches us that our power lies in our reaction, not in trying to control the uncontrollable. So, when faced with toxicity, we channel our inner stoic. Instead of engaging in the drama, we pause. It's like being in the eye of a hurricane. Wildness surrounds us, but here it's calm. This space allows us to breathe, think, and then act from a place of rational calmness. It's about shifting focus from what's happening around us to how we'll let it affect our inner peace. And how do we do this? 
by practicing mindfulness. Yes, it's tossed around a lot these days, but here's the real kicker, it works. Mindfulness lets us detach, observe the chaos without getting sucked in. It's not about ignoring the toxicity, but acknowledging it without letting it dictate our peace. Much like clouds in the sky, these moments will pass. So, the next time you find yourself in the midst of negativity, remember, you're the architect of your peace. Build it strong, fortifying your emotional stability against life's storms. 4. Setting Boundaries Imagine stepping into a world where every interaction you have is like a brushstroke on the canvas of your day. Some strokes are vibrant and uplifting, enhancing the beauty of your existence. Then there are those strokes, dark, heavy and inconsistent, left by toxic people in your life. These interactions don't just leave a mark, they alter the entire masterpiece of your day, your mood and even your self-perception. Now, think about ancient Stoics. They were masters of their own minds, not by avoiding adversity, but by fortifying their inner walls. They knew that not every opinion, critique or negative energy deserved their attention. What if I told you that dealing with toxic people could be approached with the same Stoicism? It's not about building an impenetrable wall, but about choosing which gates to open and when. This selective openness doesn't make you less of a person, it makes you a curator of your own peace. Picture your energy as a limited, precious resource, like water in a desert. Every interaction you partake in is like giving a drop of that water away. Now, would you rather give it to someone who plants seeds in your desert, making it bloom, or to someone who lets it evaporate under the scornful sun? Setting boundaries is about investing your energy wisely, not with arrogance or disdain, but with the calm resolve of a Stoic who knows his worth and the value of his time. It's about calmly communicating. This is where I draw the line, because your peace is not up for negotiation. So, let's move forward with this mindset. View each day as an opportunity to paint your masterpiece, to invest your energy where it grows wonders. Remember, respecting yourself enough to set boundaries is not an act of aggression. It's an act of self-respect and wisdom. Start today, not by cutting people out, but by delineating where your garden ends and the wild begins, and watch how the landscape of your life transforms. If this video is resonating with you, let us know in the comments and give it a like to spread its message. And don't forget to hit subscribe for more insights. 5. Energy Intelligence Ever find yourself sharing space with someone whose energy feels like a thunderstorm, turning your sunny day upside down? Navigating the choppy waters of interactions with toxic people can test the calmest of minds. But let's turn the lens inward and explore the concept of energy intelligence as our compass. Think of your energy as a protective barrier, much like an ancient city wall, something that preserves your peace and keeps out unwelcome negativity. Now, consider for a moment the power of choice in these situations. Just as you decide what fuel to put in your car, determining its performance and longevity, you hold the power to select how you react and engage with energy-draining individuals, responding with patience and understanding, or choosing not to engage at all can be your super fuel, optimizing your emotional well-being and keeping you on a steady course. This isn't about avoiding conflict. It's about arming yourself with wisdom and making choices that align with your peace. Harnessing this intelligence goes beyond mere self-control. It's about creating a space around you that is so grounded, even the mightiest storm can't shake your foundation. Like a tree deeply rooted in the earth, you are immovable, 
Not because the wind doesn't blow around you, but because you've mastered the art of bending and swaying with it without breaking. This strength and flexibility disarm toxic energy, leaving it no choice but to dissipate or move along. Now, I invite you to reflect on how you've been managing your energy in the face of adversity. Think about those moments when you felt overwhelmed by someone else's negativity. How did you respond? Did you let their storm cloud your sky, or did you shine even brighter, guiding both of you back to calm? This journey isn't about becoming unaffected. It's about recognizing that within you lies a reservoir of strength and wisdom, ready to face any challenge that comes your way. Pause, breathe, and remind yourself of the power you hold. Moving forward, how will you channel this energy intelligence to not just protect your peace, but also to light the way for others? Remember, the real test of your inner strength isn't how you avoid the storm, but how you dance in the rain. 6. Focus on goals. You know when you've set your eyes on something you really want, Perhaps it's mastering a new skill, reaching a fitness goal, or even advancing in your personal projects. It feels like you're on a clear path, right? But then, unexpectedly, you encounter people or situations that dampen your spirit. These encounters can throw you off, almost like a gust of wind redirecting a paper airplane. It's disheartening, to say the least. Take the story of Jordan, for instance. Jordan was all in on starting a small online business. The skepticism from friends and family came in waves, some doubting out loud, others subtly recommending safer paths. It's a scenario many of us are familiar with. Instead of getting embroiled in fruitless debates or attempting to validate his ambitions, Jordan concentrated on refining his skills, broadening his knowledge, and building his business one step at a time. What can we learn from Jordan's journey? A steadfast belief in one's vision and a refusal to let negativity detour one's path. This segues into how we deal with toxic people, a skill that requires finesse. The Stoics were onto something profound. They focused on what's within our control. And let's face it, Altering others isn't in that category. However, managing our response to them is well within our grasp. It's about maintaining a mental barrier, ensuring negativity doesn't penetrate and cloud our judgment or spirits. Imagine a raincoat during a downpour. It doesn't stop the rain, but keeps you dry. That's the kind of resilience we're after. So the next time you find yourself facing skepticism or negativity regarding your plans or ambitions, think of Jordan. Redirect your energy not into convincing detractors, but into fortifying your own path. Offer a smile, a nod, and carry on with your endeavors. You have goals to meet, and no amount of negativity deserves to occupy space in your thoughts without paying rent. Embrace stoicism, focus on your actions, enjoy the process, and allow the descent to become a mere whisper in the background. It's your journey, and you're the sole navigator of your path. 7. Seeking Support Every once in a while, we bump into someone who seems to challenge our peace of mind on every possible level. You know those people whose presence feels like a storm cloud on a sunny day? It's like you're stuck in quicksand. The harder you struggle to maintain your calm, the deeper you sink into frustration or anger. This is the complex dynamic we often find ourselves in when dealing with toxic individuals. It's a test of our patience, but more importantly, of our stoicism. But let's take a closer look at how reaching out for support in these situations doesn't show weakness. It reveals wisdom. Much like how a single candle can break the darkness, sharing your struggles with someone who understands can light up paths you didn't see before. These are the people who add strength to our resolve, 
not by fighting our battles for us, but by reminding us of the power of our own mental fortitude. Imagine having a wise elder in your corner, offering advice drawn from a well of experience. That's the kind of invaluable support that can help us navigate through the toxicity with grace. To harness the stoic strength within us, we need to recognize when external perspectives can help us. It's about understanding that while we can't control the actions of others, we can certainly control our reactions to them. Through the art of stoicism, we learn to detach, to see the situation from a higher perspective. It's like zooming out on a map to find alternative routes we might have missed while being zoomed in. In seeking support, we allow ourselves the space to breathe, reflect, and choose our responses carefully, ensuring they align with our values and sense of peace. Now take a moment to think about your own encounters with challenging individuals. How have you navigated these waters? Have you tried to go it alone, relying solely on your strength? Or have you reached out for that supportive perspective that could change everything? Remember, the true mark of a Stoic isn't in silence or solitary suffering, but in knowing when and how to engage the wisdom around us to walk the path with greater ease and understanding. 8. Control of Negative Self-Talk Remember the first time you crossed paths with someone whose energy felt like a rain cloud on a parade? We've all been there, feeling the weight of someone else's negativity pulling us down. Surprisingly, the way we talk to ourselves when dealing with toxic people can either be our armor or our Achilles heel. Think of your mind like a garden and every thought about yourself as a seed. Planting seeds of strength and resilience helps us stand tall, but sprinkle in doubts and fears. And those toxic weeds start to choke out all the good. But that's just part of the story. Walking away isn't always an option, and here's where the ancient wisdom of Stoicism steps in. It's not about what happens to us, but about how we react to it. Stoicism enlightens us. The true strength is found in our reactions. Thus, when navigating through the turbulence of someone else's negative influence, carefully monitor the conversations you have with yourself. Instead of asking, why do I have to deal with this? Consider pondering, how can I grow stronger from this encounter? It may cultivate resilience, empathy, or the courage to uphold your boundaries. Altering your viewpoint is not merely playing with semantics, it's reclaiming your power. Another tool at your disposal. That little but powerful thing called detachment, not cold, not uncaring, just wisely choosing where your energy goes. Imagine someone's negative comments as arrows. Now, if your self-worth is an impenetrable shield, those arrows can't touch you. This doesn't mean you won't feel the sting sometimes, but remember, those arrows can only wound you if you let them. So, take a moment to reflect. How often do you let external negativity influence your self-talk? Controlling this doesn't mean building a fortress around your heart. It's about knowing your worth, understanding that your reaction is your power, and sometimes, simply deciding not to give your peace away. Stoicism isn't about emotionless existence, but choosing which battles are worth your heartbeats. Remember, the only person you really have control over in this life is you. 9. Solution-Oriented Approach Do you ever ask yourself how to handle those toxic people we all inevitably cross paths with? It's like navigating through a dense fog, where every step feels uncertain and the air feels heavy. The key here is adopting a solution-oriented mindset, rooted deeply in the principles of Stoicism. This approach sets the stage for us to transform these interactions into opportunities for personal growth and emotional intelligence, rather than sources of frustration. 
As you might imagine, flipping the script on toxic encounters requires creativity. It's like playing chess. You need to think several moves ahead, anticipating reactions without becoming emotionally entangled. This means listening more than you speak and responding with calmness, a trait admired by many but mastered by few. This strategic creativity enables you to maintain your peace and not get pulled into the chaos. Adaptability in these situations is your best friend. It's the ability to remain true to your values while navigating the challenge of interacting with difficult personalities. Imagine you're a tree, firm in your roots yet flexible in the wind. You sway but do not break when faced with the gales of toxicity. This resilience strengthens your character and equips you with the tools to face any storm. I'm inviting you now to reflect. How do you react when confronted with negativity or manipulation? Remember, the presence of toxic people might not be within your control, but how you respond is. By incorporating a stoic, solution-oriented mindset, you're not just avoiding the pitfalls of negativity, you're actively shaping a life of peace, resilience, and dignity. Remember, in the grand scheme of things, it's not the obstacles we face, but how we overcome them that defines us. 10. Avoiding unnecessary arguments. Choose your battles wisely. That's a piece of advice as old as time, but it's never been more relevant than in today's world where every interaction can feel like a minefield. When dealing with toxic people, it's like navigating a maze in the dark. You never know when you might bump into a wall. The key here is not to charge at every wall you encounter, but to feel your way around and decide which paths are worth taking. Some conflicts are just dead ends, energy drainers with no exit or treasure at the end. Recognizing this can save you a lot of headaches. You will be surprised to learn that sometimes the most powerful thing you can do is not to react at all. Silence can be louder than any word you might throw into the fray. When toxic people aim their negativity at you, they're often looking for a reaction, any sign that their words have hit home. By choosing not to engage, you're taking the wind out of their sails. It's not about ignoring the problem, but about choosing not to let it control you. Your energy is precious. Spend it on battles that matter. Beware of the trap of trying to change someone's toxic behavior by arguing or reasoning with them. It's like trying to put out a fire with gasoline. It only fuels the flames. Instead, ask reflective questions to encourage them to see the situation from a different perspective. It's about shifting from confrontation to conversation. This approach won't work every time, and that's okay. The goal isn't to win every battle with them, but to maintain your peace and dignity in the process. On the battlefield, empathy is your shield and patience your sword. Trying to understand where the other person is coming from doesn't mean you agree with them or condone their behavior. It means you're strong enough to look beyond the surface. Remember, everyone is fighting their own battles, some of which you know nothing about. By practicing patience, you give yourself time to respond rather than react. This doesn't make you weak, it makes you wise. I'm inviting you to take a moment and reflect on your encounters with difficult people. Are there patterns you notice are there battles you've been fighting that are simply not worth your time? Remember, being stoic isn't about being emotionless. It's about not allowing your emotions to control you. It's about choosing where to focus your energy, knowing not every battle is yours to fight. So, next time you're faced with a potential argument, take a step back, breathe, and ask yourself, is this really worth my peace? 11. Detection of False Cordiality Isn't it shocking how quickly a simple discussion can escalate into a full-blown argument? It's like a small spark turning into a wildfire, 
destroying everything in its path. But here's the thing, not every spark has to turn into a fire. Especially when dealing with toxic people, understanding the concept of false cordiality can be your fire extinguisher. It's about recognizing when someone's pretending to be on your side while silently stacking the wood to feed the flames. Body language doesn't lie. A grin that doesn't light up their eyes or arms, cross tightly across their chest, are telltale signs of insincerity. A subtle clue that you're dealing with hidden agendas, not genuine concern. Pause for a moment and listen to what's not being said. A voice dripping with honey but lacking warmth, or an awkward laugh that seems to jar with the flow of conversation, can reveal more than words ever could. These nuances of communication are like invisible threads pulling at your intuition, tugging you towards the realization that all is not as it seems. The way someone speaks can be the mirror reflecting their true intentions, clear as day for those who choose to see. Now, think about the patterns you notice in people's behavior. Consistent actions reveal a person's true character. It's like the steady beat of a drum, unchanging and reliable. On the other hand, behavior that swings wildly based on who's watching is as flimsy as a leaf in the wind, signifying that the show of friendship is just that, a show. It's crucial to observe these patterns, for in the realm of human interactions, consistency is king. Being able to sift through the facades of false cordiality is not just about safeguarding yourself against toxic relationships. It's about cultivating an environment where authentic relationships can flourish. It's about being a beacon of authenticity in a sea of pretense, guiding others towards the shores of genuine connections. So next time you sense that something's off, trust your gut, pay attention to the signs, and remember, not every hand extended in friendship is one worth shaking. Stay steadfast, for the path ahead is yours alone. Remember, your peace is a fortress. Guard it with the wisdom of Stoicism. Exploring Stoicism offers the chance to not only handle toxic individuals, but to also lead a more fulfilling life. And there's more. Lesson 6. Stoic Techniques to Increase Your Intelligence Marcus Aurelius once said, the soul becomes dyed with the color of its thoughts. Every idea, every flicker of curiosity shapes who you become. As you're tuning into this, imagine a version of yourself that's even sharper, more insightful, and bursting with newfound wisdom. It's not a distant dream, but a tangible reality. And in this video, you will learn 10 powerful stoic techniques to elevate your intelligence. Embrace this opportunity to explore every facet of your mind and its boundless potential. If you're passionate about personal growth, take a moment to hit that notification bell and subscribe. Let our journey to a wiser you begin. 1. Embracing change as a teacher. Change is a constant. Seasons shift, technology evolves, and even our favorite snacks might get a new recipe. While many of us resist change, fearing the unknown or the loss of what's familiar, the Stoics viewed change as a natural part of life and a profound teacher. Think about it. Every time you've grown, hasn't it been accompanied by change? Whether it's moving to a new city, starting a new job, or even reading a book that shifts your perspective, change pushes us out of our comfort zones and challenges us to adapt. This adaptation, this learning to thrive amidst change, is what sharpens our intelligence and resilience. Marcus Aurelius, a beacon of Stoic wisdom, once mused, Loss is nothing else but change, and change is nature's delight. This perspective is both refreshing and empowering. Instead of viewing change as a loss, we can see it as an opportunity, a chance to learn, adapt, and grow. Now, 
Embracing change doesn't mean we should recklessly chase after every new trend or constantly upend our lives. Instead, it's about developing a flexible mindset. It's about understanding that change, whether big or small, is an opportunity to learn something new. When we approach change with curiosity rather than fear, we not only navigate life's ups and downs with grace, but also continuously expand our knowledge and understanding. Next time you encounter a change, whether it's a new software at work or a detour on your usual route home, take a deep breath and embrace it. Remember, every change is a lesson waiting to be learned, and with each lesson, our intelligence grows. 2. Embracing Discomfort for Growth When we think of comfort, we often imagine a cozy bed, our favorite TV show, or perhaps a warm cup of cocoa on a cold day. But what if I told you that the path to true intelligence and wisdom often lies outside of this comfort zone? Stoicism, an ancient philosophy that has stood the test of time, teaches us that embracing discomfort can be a powerful tool for personal growth. Imagine you're faced with a challenging task, like learning a new language or mastering a musical instrument. It's tempting to give up when things get tough or to avoid these challenges altogether. But the Stoics believed that it's precisely these moments of discomfort that offer the greatest opportunities for growth. By pushing through the unease and the struggle, we not only gain new skills, but also develop a resilience and mental toughness that can serve us in all areas of life. Marcus Aurelius once said, the obstacle is the way. This means that the very challenges and obstacles we face are not barriers to our growth, but rather the path itself. By reframing our mindset and viewing discomfort as an opportunity rather than a hindrance, we can harness its power to propel us forward. Think of stoic wisdom the next time you face a challenging task or uncomfortable situation. Embrace the discomfort. And know that with each hurdle you overcome, you're not only becoming smarter but also building a stronger, more resilient version of yourself. 3 the practice of deliberate disengagement. We often hear about the importance of engagement, engaging with our work, our studies, our relationships. But what about the flip side? The Stoics recognized the immense value in deliberate disengagement, a purposeful step back from our usual routines and habits to refresh our perspectives and rejuvenate our minds. Imagine a painter who's been working on a piece for hours. Sometimes the best thing they can do to see the painting's true essence is to step back, take a break, and return with fresh eyes. Similarly, our minds benefit from periodic disengagement, allowing us to approach challenges with renewed vigor and clarity. Marcus Aurelius, in his introspective writings, noted, Men seek retreats for themselves, houses in the country, seashores and mountains, and you too are wont to desire such things very much. But this is altogether a mark of the most common sort of men, for it is in your power whenever you shall choose to retire into yourself. This stoic wisdom highlights that true retreat isn't about physical distance, but about finding space within ourselves, away from the constant pull of external demands. In today's hyper-connected era, the idea of disengaging might seem counterintuitive. Yet, it's more crucial than ever. It doesn't mean abandoning our responsibilities or shirking our duties. Instead, it's about setting aside intentional moments, be it a few minutes or a few days, to disconnect, reflect, and simply be. This could be as simple as taking a walk without your phone, practicing deep breathing exercises, or dedicating a day to unplugged activities. By practicing deliberate disengagement, we give our minds the space they need to process, learn, and grow. It's a counterbalance to the constant engagement of modern life, and in this balance, we find a path to greater intelligence and deeper understanding. 
So as you navigate the demands of today, remember the power of stepping back, if only for a moment, to rediscover clarity and purpose. 4. Maintaining Lifelong Learning The end of formal education, be it school or college, doesn't mark the end of learning. If anything, it's just the beginning. The Stoics believed that every day presents new opportunities to learn, grow, and refine our understanding of the world. This concept of lifelong learning isn't about amassing degrees or certifications. It's about nurturing a genuine curiosity and thirst for knowledge that lasts a lifetime. Think about a child's wonder when they encounter something new. Their eyes light up, questions pour out, and their imagination runs wild. As adults, it's easy to lose this sense of wonder amidst the responsibilities and routines of daily life. But what if we could reignite that spark? What if we approached each day with the same eagerness to learn and discover? Epictetus, with his profound simplicity, stated, Only the educated are free. At its core, this isn't just about formal education. It's about the freedom that comes from understanding, from broadening our horizons, and from continuously seeking knowledge. When we commit to lifelong learning, we equip ourselves with the tools to navigate the complexities of life with grace and wisdom. In today's digital age, the resources to learn are at our fingertips, from online courses to podcasts, from documentaries to interactive apps, the avenues to expand our knowledge are endless. But lifelong learning isn't just about consuming content, it's about reflection, application, and sharing. It's about taking what we learn and weaving it into the tapestry of our lives, making us richer in thought and deeper in understanding. As you move forward, keep in mind that every day is a classroom, every interaction a lesson, and every challenge an opportunity to learn. Embrace the journey of lifelong learning and watch as your intelligence, wisdom, and understanding soar to new heights. 5. Cultivating gratitude as a gateway to wisdom. At first glance, gratitude might seem like an emotion, a fleeting feeling we experience when someone does something kind for us. But the Stoics saw gratitude in a different light. For them, gratitude wasn't just an emotion. It was a practice, a lens through which we can view the world and, in turn, deepen our understanding and intelligence. Gratitude pushes us to recognize the value in every moment, every interaction, and every challenge. When we're grateful, we're more attuned to the lessons life offers. Instead of lamenting what we lack, we celebrate what we have. And in that celebration, we find clarity, perspective, and a deeper appreciation for the intricacies of life. Marcus Aurelius, in his Moments of Reflection, penned, When you arise in the morning, think of what a precious privilege it is to be alive, to breathe, to think, to enjoy, to love. This isn't just a call to be thankful for another day, it's an invitation to approach each day with wonder, curiosity, and gratitude. By doing so, we open ourselves up to the countless lessons and insights that each moment holds. In today's fast-paced world, it's easy to get caught up in the race, to focus on what's next, and to overlook the present. But, by cultivating a practice of gratitude, we ground ourselves in the now. We become more observant, more reflective, and more open to the wisdom that surrounds us. Whether it's the joy in a child's laughter, the lesson in a failed project, or the beauty in a sunset, gratitude amplifies our ability to see, learn, and grow. So as you navigate the journey of life, remember to pause and give thanks. Not just on special occasions or during moments of success, but every day, in the big and the small. For in gratitude, we find not just joy, but also a path to greater intelligence, understanding, and wisdom. 6. The Power of Mindful Observation Have you ever stopped to watch a leaf fluttering in the wind, 
or observed the intricate patterns of frost on a window pane. While these moments might seem simple or even mundane, they hold a secret that the Stoics understood deeply, the power of mindful observation. Mindful observation is about truly seeing the world around us, not just glancing at it. It's about immersing ourselves in the present moment, noticing the details, and marveling at the beauty and complexity of life. When we observe mindfully, we're not just passive spectators, we're active participants in the world, soaking in knowledge and insights from our surroundings. Seneca, a guiding light of Stoicism, once reflected, time discovers truth. This insight can be applied to our practice of mindful observation. By taking the time to truly observe, we uncover truths about the world, about others, and about ourselves. We begin to see patterns, make connections, and develop a deeper understanding of life's intricacies. Today, with screens and distractions vying for our attention at every turn, taking a moment to simply observe might seem out of place. But it's in these quiet moments of observation that our minds can expand and our intelligence can flourish. Whether it's watching the rhythmic ebb and flow of waves on a beach, observing the bustling life of a city square, or even just noticing the way light filters through the leaves of a tree, there's a world of knowledge waiting to be discovered. Take a few moments each day to observe mindfully Push aside distractions, quiet your mind, and truly see the world around you. In doing so, you'll not only find beauty in the everyday, but also nurture your intelligence in profound and unexpected ways. 7. The Art of Active Listening We've all been there, sitting across from someone, nodding our heads, but our minds are miles away. Maybe we're thinking about our to-do list, the latest TV show, or what we're having for dinner. But here's a secret the Stoics knew well. True intelligence isn't just about speaking, it's about listening. And not just hearing words, but genuinely understanding them. Active listening is more than just being silent when someone else talks. It's about being present, giving them your full attention, and seeking to understand their perspective fully. It's about asking questions, showing empathy, and refraining from immediately jumping to conclusions or formulating a response. When we actively listen, we're not just being polite. We're absorbing knowledge, understanding different viewpoints, and broadening our horizons. The Stoic philosopher Epictetus once observed, we have two ears and one mouth so that we can listen twice as much as we speak. This isn't just a witty remark, it's a profound insight into human nature. By truly listening, we open ourselves up to a vast world of knowledge and experiences that can enrich our minds and souls. Today's society often values quick responses and witty comebacks, but there's immense power in pausing, listening, and reflecting. By practicing active listening, we not only enhance our relationships, but also our intelligence. We become more informed, more empathetic, and more connected to the world around us. So the next time you're in a conversation, challenge yourself to truly listen. You might be surprised at what you learn. 8. Seeking silence amidst the noise. Our surroundings are often filled with a cacophony of sounds, notifications, and distractions. From the buzz of our phones to the constant hum of chatter, it's rare to find a moment of true silence. Yet the Stoics believed that such moments, when we disconnect from the external noise and connect with our inner selves, are essential for deep reflection and growth. Silence isn't just the absence of noise, it's a space where our thoughts can breathe. It's a sanctuary where we can confront our feelings reflect on our actions, and plan our next steps. By regularly seeking out these pockets of silence, we give our minds the room they need to expand, think critically, and cultivate intelligence. Seneca, a renowned Stoic philosopher, once remarked, we suffer more often in imagination than in reality. 
This insight reminds us that many of our anxieties and fears are self-created, amplified by the constant noise around us. By stepping back and immersing ourselves in silence, we can discern between genuine concerns and imagined worries, allowing us to address the former and release the latter. For many, the idea of seeking silence might seem daunting. After all, our modern lives are built around connectivity and constant engagement. But it's not about escaping the world. It's about finding balance. Even a few minutes of silence each day, perhaps during a morning walk or before bedtime, can make a significant difference. Over time, this practice not only sharpens our intelligence, but also brings clarity, peace, and a deeper understanding of ourselves and the world around us. So, amidst the hustle and bustle of daily life, remember to pause, breathe, and embrace the transformative power of silence. 9. The Value of Diverse Interactions One of the most enriching experiences in life is interacting with a diverse range of people. From different backgrounds, cultures and walks of life, each person carries a universe of experiences and knowledge. The Stoics, in their wisdom, recognized that our intelligence isn't just shaped by books or solitary reflection, but also by the mosaic of people we engage with. Consider this, every conversation is an opportunity to learn. Whether it's a chat with a barista about their hometown, a deep discussion with a colleague from another department, or a heart-to-heart -heart with a grandparent about their youth, each interaction offers a fresh perspective, a new piece of the puzzle of life. The Stoic philosopher Seneca once remarked, associate with people who are likely to improve you. While this advice is golden, it's also worth noting that improvement doesn't just come from experts or mentors. Sometimes, the most profound insights come from the most unexpected sources. By being open to diverse interactions, we expose ourselves to a broader range of ideas, stories and experiences. Now this doesn't mean you should strike up a conversation with every person you meet, but it's about being open, being curious. It's about recognizing that every individual, no matter their status or background, has something valuable to share. In a world where it's easy to stay within our comfort zones and echo chambers, venturing out and seeking diverse interactions can be a powerful tool for growth. So, look for opportunities to engage with a variety of people as you go about your day. Listen to their stories, ask questions, and share your own experiences. Through these interactions, not only will you enrich your understanding of the world, but you'll also find your intelligence blossoming in ways you never imagined. 10. Cultivating curiosity over judgment. We live in an age of snap judgments. With the swipe of a finger, we decide what we like, what we don't, who we follow, and who we ignore. But what if, instead of rushing to judge, we paused and chose to be curious? Stoicism teaches us that cultivating curiosity can be a profound way to increase our intelligence and understanding of the world around us. Curiosity is like a muscle. The more you exercise it, the stronger it becomes. When we approach situations, people or ideas with an open mind, we allow ourselves the opportunity to learn and grow. Instead of dismissing something because it's unfamiliar or different, we ask questions. We seek to understand. This not only broadens our horizons, but also deepens our empathy and compassion. As the Stoic philosopher Epictetus wisely stated, it is impossible for a person to begin to learn what he thinks he already knows, this quote serves as a powerful reminder that when we think we have all the answers, we close ourselves off to the vast knowledge the world has to offer. By adopting a mindset of curiosity, we acknowledge that there's always more to learn, and in doing so, we become lifelong learners. We live in an increasingly distracting and noisy world. It's easy to get caught up in the rush of life and forget to stop, look around, and truly listen. 
but by choosing curiosity over judgment, we can break free from this cycle. We can engage more deeply with the world around us, learn from diverse perspectives, and in the process, increase our intelligence in ways we never imagined. So the next time you're faced with something unfamiliar or challenging, take a deep breath, open your mind, and let your curiosity lead the way. Which of these Stoic techniques resonated most with you? Let us know in the comments. The wisdom of the Stoics reminds us that understanding is an ongoing journey. Today's insights are just stepping stones on our collective path of growth. If you value this pursuit of knowledge, please subscribe and give this video a thumbs up. Together, let's keep learning and growing.